Good evening and welcome to Sacred Heart Parish and today's liturgy, including those joining us on our live streaming through our website. As a courtesy, please silence all your electronic devices. Join us in the parish hall next weekend after all the masses for our ministry fair. Many of our ministers will be present to share about their ministry. We're still in need of volunteers for our coffee and donut program on Sunday mornings. Parishioners or parish groups interested in volunteering are invited to sign up through our website or contact the parish office. The next available date is October 28th. Sacred Heart Parish School Golf Tournament will be Friday, October 12th at Riverwalk Golf Club. Prizes for best dressed, best cart decorations, and much more. <coughs> if you have further questions, please contact the tournament committee members at the Parish Hall patio. <coughs> Excuse me. St. Vincent de Paul's donation truck is here after all the masses. Knights of Columbus are available to help load the truck. Sacred Heart Men's Prayer Breakfast is next Saturday morning, September 29th, in the Parish Hall. Please RSVP to Deacon Kevin Murray. And please check the bulletin or our website for contact information and other details on these and other parish events. And now for our liturgy. This evening, our presider is Father Sheehan, assisted by Deacon Frank Osgood. Good evening again, and welcome to Sacred Heart. Let us all stand and join in song. We're going to sing number 81. Number 81, come. Now is the time to worship. Number 81 in the Never Too Young hymnal. Number 81. Please join us in singing. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. You're all very welcome to our Mass this evening, and we extend a special welcome to any visitors who've joined us, also people following the celebration and live streaming. As Christians, we are called to live with one another in peace and unity. One of the things that is very damaging to unity is false ambition. 
This causes us to put our own interests and ambitions first. Let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his mercy, compassion, and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor. Grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us be, beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test that we may have proof 
of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet but do not possess. You kill and envy but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Scriptures according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to talk this morning about first Jesus' words, second Jesus' actions, and third an application of that. In today's gospel, Jesus teaches his apostles, if anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. So I'm going to discuss this thought, this thought of the Christian as servant, the servant of all. And the word Mark uses in today's gospel to express servant is the word from which our English word deacon descends. In our Catholic church, the ministry of the deacon is defined as a ministry of service. In John's Gospel, in the original, the word is used to describe waiters who serve the water made into wine at the marriage feast at Cana. And Matthew uses it to describe the king's servants in the parable of the marriage feast. It is the way St. Paul describes himself as the servant of the gospel, the servant of the church, the servant of the new covenant, and the servant of God. And John uses it to describe those who follow Jesus. They are his deacons, his servants. And while I was ordained by the church to this ministry of deacons, this diaconal service, you too are called. Every Christian is called to be a servant of God, of the gospel, of the covenant, of the church. I remember when I was a kid, and I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember this like I am, but the beginning of the old Baltimore Catechism that I and most other Catholic children had to memorize in the 1950s. Why did God make me? God made me to know him, to love him, and to serve him in this world and to be happy with him in the next. 
We live to serve the good news proclaimed by Jesus, that the kingdom of God has come, that God loves us and gave his son to death for us. We live to serve the new covenant, that solemn compact Christ made with us in his own blood. We live to serve the church. And our priests here at Sacred Heart would be the first to tell you that church we live to serve is not a building nor a privileged hierarchy, but the body of Christ, the community of all who believe. The way we serve God and the gospel, the covenant and the church is by using those gifts that God has given to us. And God has given every single one of us the gift of faith, given not only for ourselves, but given for the good of others, for the good of the community. What a sobering responsibility that is. The power to believe, the power to commit ourselves totally to others and to Christ, that it's given to us for the common good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, by his grace, you and I can make it possible for a man or a woman to live a more human, a more Christian existence. And it might be a word, a gracious greeting, a word of counsel, an expression of sympathy, even a homily, perhaps. It might be an action, food for the hungry, cold water for the thirsty, clothing for the naked, room for the stranger. And whatever the service, the Christian enables another to live more humanly, more Christianly. And we do that in the power of Christ, literally for Christ's sake. But we cannot forget this sobering fact. There is a cost to following Christ, for his footsteps lead to the cross. In the image of Christ, the Christian is a suffering servant. There is a cost to discipleship, but the reward will be well worth the cost for every one of us. My sisters and brothers of Sacred Heart Church in Coronado, California, what does this say to you now, here, at this moment of your life with God? I can't know what it says to you, but you can. And God is talking to you, or he soon will be. I know that because the need is so great. It's all around you and me. The part of the world we live in, the paths we walk every day, the people we pass, the work we do, the many hidden behind some wall or window, the many who see little reason to live. And when I see you here every Sunday, what a privilege it is to look out at you. Because I see such a generous gathering, hearts open to the underprivileged in San Diego, Mexico, and around the world, and I know you will meet those needs. But I'd like to return to today's gospel then and address a particular need. As I read the gospel preparing for today, I reflected on it and tried to imagine the scene and what might have happened. Jesus and his disciples arrived at Capernaum and they went aside a house, washed their feet and sat down. He asked them, what are you talking about? There was no answer. When there had been silence for quite a few minutes, he stood up, he went to the door.
I'm holding her because he's, she's too short to see. He came back with a child, one he had found in the street, a small girl. He put the child in the middle of their circle, and he said, do you see her? And of course they did. He put his hands on her, and he greeted her and kissed her and said, whoever receives a child like this, one in my name, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives not me, but the one who sent me. Please think about that for a moment. Everyone who receives a child as Jesus would, whether born, adopted, or cared for, is receiving God himself. And I don't know what they did. Peter probably gave her a pat on the shoulder. Frank knocked his glasses off. John probably kissed her on the cheek. Perhaps Judas gave her a coin, and maybe Philip set her on his knee. If they received that evening that small girl in all sincerity, they must have been filled, according to his word, with God's own self. Thank you very much. My brothers and sisters, let us receive the children around us with love and work to protect them from all harm from the moment they are conceived. And in so doing, we will receive Jesus, and not only Jesus, but the one who sent him also. I'd like to end this homily with a story told about Mother Teresa. She was visiting a mental hospital in Lebanon and the building had been shattered by shells and rockets, and there was no water and little food. 37 children, most of them mentally retarded and paraplegic, were dangerously weak. A Red Cross official reported that she saw the problem, fell to her knees, and prayed for a few seconds, and then rattled off a list of the supplies she needed, diapers, plastic pants, chamber pots, and the like. From a scary hell, she took all the children to the safety of her own sisters in Beirut. Her words, all we can give them is tender, loving care. They are in God's hands. Few of us will do what Mother Teresa did, but that's not the point. We imitate her by not doing what she did but by responding to what's before us as she did. Mother Teresa was right. Sometimes all we can do for our sisters and brothers in need is to give them tender, loving care. They are in God's hands. But my brothers and sisters, we dare not forget when they are in God's hands, they are in our hands also. And I want to thank that lovely little girl. Her family just suffered a loss this week. Uh, was it a, a mother of one of the parents? So perhaps you might hold them all in your prayers today. Let us all profess our faith together by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Christ our Lord predicted his saving death and resurrection. Through him, the suffering servant, let us bring our petitions to the Father of all mercies. For the church, that we may be guided by the wisdom from above, so to bear the fruit of righteousness for all God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations to uphold the dignity, value, and safety of all our children, and in receiving them, receive Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military members who are far from their families, and for their loved ones awaiting their safe return, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Claudette West, Christine Bechtel, Pamela Thayer, Penny King, and all who are seriously ill or injured, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died recently, especially, especially Missy Say and Isabel Soto, may rise into the arms of God, where the last are always first, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we offer from the silence of our heart, turning to God as his beloved children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of our Savior, these prayers we bring before you. Express our faith in your Son, who humbled himself to die on the cross for us, and rose again to be our glorious Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Number 136, number 136, make me a channel of your peace. Number 136, prayer of St. Francis, number 136.
My sisters and brothers pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. See with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father Almighty, and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself so that, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we bring to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, but blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to Missy C, our family are present at this Mass, and to all though, and to all who are pleasing to you that they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope on the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another the peace of the Lord. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us sing together number 19, 1919. Lead me, Lord, number 19.
Sometimes we forget the last server that he disappeared. <laughs> okay, as the last server, you can just come out. In the meantime, we're going to be able to adjust the software. with your spirit. Amen. Go in God's peace. Thanks be to God. Number 100, just like you, we'll sing one verse only. Number 100, number 100.